Ray Epps, a man seen on camera on numerous occasions telling people to go into the Capitol building, has been charged by the DOJ on one misdemeanor count. Let that sink in. One misdemeanor count. The man who is on camera telling people to do this, the man who privately said to a family member that he orchestrated the event. This man has been charged with one misdemeanor count. Now, he's been charged. And I wonder what's the point? Because all this does is it raises more questions about why this guy is being protected. Now, here's a conspiracy theory for you. There's actually a whole bunch. I love all the conspiracy theories. First, Ray Epps is a Fed. That's what they say. Subject of Tucker Carlson's January 6th conspiracy theories that Ray Epps was a federal agent orchestrating the events of January 6th. And that's why he was never charged. Now, I, I don't know if I believe that. Others say that he was uh, uh, um, a plant, you know, that, that he wasn't actually working with any federal agency, but he was cooperating with or taking instruction from that he may have been a criminal informant, that maybe he became a criminal informant after the fact. My understanding, I could be wrong, is that initially after January 6th, his face was included in some wanted posters, but then quickly removed, which suggests maybe he, be he became a cooperating witness immediately and started handing over information. There's that conspiracy theory. How about this conspiracy theory? Oh, I love them all. That Ray Epps actually is just some random Trump supporter who was there who wanted to storm the Capitol. And the feds are like, hey, Let's not charge this guy so they think he's a fed. Have you guys seen the film Sound of Freedom? In the film, which I'm sure most of you have seen, there's a scene where there are a bunch of traffickers meeting with the agents. Before the raid, the agents say, this guy, don't handcuff him and walk him away. So what happens? When the raid happens and the undercover agents, including Tim Ballard, are detained by law enforcement and cuffed, the one guy, the, the Don or whatever they called him, is walked away as the cops pat him on the back. And, he, and then Ballard can say, hey, that was the guy who set us up. My point here is, I don't know. I really don't. I can tell you something is off about this story. We can clearly see it, that this guy who was on camera orchestrating, as he described it, the events of January 6th, is only getting one misdemeanor charge, no incitement. They, they came after Owen Schroyer for bullhorning. In his sentencing documents, or in, when, when the prosecutors were requesting uh, a sentence, even though he wasn't even charged with incitement. And then you have the dude who quite literally told people to commit the crime not being charged with it. Yeah, perhaps the Ray Epps thing is an attempt to obfuscate who was really there and what was really going on. And I don't know. But look, man, if y'all are going to entertain some conspiracy theories, you can make up a million and one. We got a bunch of news pretending January 6th and who the government is targeting. And let's let's do this. A journalist who was objectively there as a journalist with camera equipment producing a documentary has been has been convicted on four counts. A guy with a camera. A guy with a camera who explicitly stated he was there with the intention of filming has been charged. A man who is not a Trump supporter, who is a conservative but doesn't like Trump. They convicted him. But Ray Epps, I wonder why. No, seriously. I mean, for everybody who comes out and says this proves he was a Fed or something, I'm like, it doesn't because you got to consider they want to sow discord and, a, and a, any good operation is going to have patsies and misdirection. One thing that intelligence agencies are very good at in the event they actually do orchestrate something. My point is this. If you really think the feds were involved in January 6th and orchestrating it, they're going to throw a distraction your way so you don't track down who was actually there and who was actually organizing anything. Ray Epps could be a distraction or he could be involved. I don't know. But it is funny how the media lies to defend him and the feds didn't want to charge him. Here's a story from NBC News. Ray Epps, subject of Tucker Carlson's January 6th conspiracy theories charged by DOJ. Epps entered the Capitol grounds on January 6th as a supporter of former President Donald Trump. He told the January 6th committee that the conspiracy theories about him ruined his life. Interesting. They say Epps, a January 6th participant whose removal from the FBI's Capitol violence webpage sparked conspiracy theories that he was a federal informant, was charged in connection with the Capitol attack on Tuesday. Epps is charged with one misdemeanor count, disorderly or disruptive conduct on restricted grounds. He was charged by information which suggests that he plans to enter a plea deal, which means he's probably going to get a month. 
And I, I seriously, there are a lot of people who uh, uh, were charged with trespass or being out, being on restricted uh, restricted grounds or disorderly conduct. They all took plea agreements and they got uh, uh, a very short amount of time. There's currently a security guard who was sentenced to three years because he pleaded not guilty, even though other people charged with similar things received only a couple months when they did plead guilty. This is called the jury tax or the trial tax, which I believe is unconstitutional, but we'll get into. In an interview with the January 6th committee last year, Epps said that he'd gone to Washington, D.C. in January as a supporter of former President Trump. But the conspiracy theories that followed had torn his life apart. He said, I never intended to break the law. It's not in my DNA. I've never. I'm sure you've looked up my record. I don't break the law. Epps filed a defamation suit against Fox News host Tucker Carlson and former host Tucker Carlson for spreading the conspiracy theories, blah, blah, blah. That's like, it's really stupid. I don't see how that uh, uh, you win a defamation case like that. Because Tucker Carlson, of course, understands the law. But, you know, biased judges. Here are the documents from Court Listener. United States District Court for the District of Columbia, United States versus James Ray Epps Sr., defendant. Information, the United States attorney charges that on or about January 6, 2021, within the District of Columbia, James Ray Epps Sr. did knowingly and with intent to impede and disrupt the disorderly conduct of government business and official functions, engage in disorderly and disruptive conduct in and within such proximity to a restricted building and grounds. That is, any posted, cordoned off, and otherwise restricted area within the U.S. Capitol and its grounds, where the vice president was and would be temporarily visiting, when and so that such conduct did in fact impede and disrupt the orderly conduct of government business and official functions, and attempted and conspired to do so. Disorderly, con disorderly or disruptive conduct in restricted building and grounds, in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Section 1752A, Section 2, Matthew M. Graves. And there it is. Uh, I believe uh, out of Tampa, it would seem. Now, I love this. NBC News says January 6th rioter who wielded police shield invokes Ray Epps conspiracy theory at Proud Boys trial, arguing that he was a suspected government operative. What's funny here is they moved prosecutors moved to strike that claim and they did, which is weird. But whatever, I guess this is what you need to be careful of. There are many people who did bad things, stole police. Don't steal a police shield. What are you doing? Come on. Smashing windows, fighting with cops. Nah, not OK. And now in court, invoking Ray Epps, there is one thing I think it is fair to say in reference to invoking Ray Epps, and that's the light charges and light sentencing, in which case you can say there is inequality under the law that Ray Epps has been charged several two and a half years later with one count, despite the fact that he's on camera inciting people to commit this crime. And the, and the government previously recommended Recently, Owen Schroyer, this is September 5th, they recommended Owen Schroyer go to jail for 120 days, even though he was only charged with being on restricted grounds because of his speech before, during and after. If that is the case, Ray Epps should also get a very lengthy prison sentence because while they argue that Owen Schroyer didn't tell people to go inside, his words resulted in them doing it. OK, well, Ray Epps directly incited people. So don't you think there should be some more serious charges? Now, look, there are a lot of people on January 6th, and this is important information that they're trying to obfuscate. Many bad people tore down barricades and rushed to the Capitol, storming in and fighting with cops. They should be criminally charged. To what degree? I don't know. I think 20 years is a little excessive. I think time served at this point, considering it's been two and a half years. That's fair. One guy's getting three years and he's a security guard who wasn't even doing anything violent. He's there for a couple minutes. That's nuts. A lot of people showed up to the Capitol after the barricades had been torn down. That means there's no signs. There, there's nothing. There's, there's no warning to anybody walking by that the grounds are restricted. There's no police. There's no broken glass. Now, this is what I find fascinating because the Young Turks took me out of context specifically um, to, to, to defend the government. And it's weird because I was correct. I think this was back in January, or it might have been even, even, even January of 2020, 2022, I'm sorry. When it came to many people who were charged with trespass, I said there will be many people acquitted because you cannot charge trespass without warning. Sure enough, there were two individuals at the time within the following months, one completely acquitted of all charges because there is video of the police fanning people in. 
There's no barricades. There's no broken glass. That was only one side of the building. The Young Turks insulted me, called me stupid, and then made the argument that if you're walking over broken glass, you know you're trespassing, which is still not legally the case and wasn't the case for the people on the other side of the building. I wonder why they would defend the government in that way. I want to read for, uh, uh, for you something from CBS News that matters. Let me read for you uh, this interview. Bill Whitaker interviewing Ray Epps. Whitaker says, as closely as you can remember, what exactly did you say to him? On the front line, he whispers, he says, dude, we're not here for that. The police aren't the enemy or something like that. Did anyone from the federal government direct you to be there, to be here at the peace circus? He says, no, no one from the FBI. No, your old comrades and the Oath Keepers. No. Whitaker says, I think what is so damning about the videos is that there's a barrier there. The barrier gets knocked down and a police officer, a female officer, gets knocked down and the mob, including you, walk over the barrier and march on toward the Capitol. Why didn't you stop to help this officer who was knocked over? Epps says, when she was knocked down and I started to go towards her to help her up and I saw a billy club over here in the corner of my eye and I thought, you know, they're going to think I'm part of this. So I backed off. Whitaker says, you were part of it. To which Epps responds, I was there. I wasn't a part of that knocking her down. Robin Epps says, and he wasn't part of the violence. That's a big difference. Is that you there? Asks Whitaker. Epps was never seen committing an act of violence that day or entering the Capitol. Epps told us when he saw the violence, his fervor to enter the building became a desire to play peacemaker and police body cam backs him up. I thought I could stop it. So I went back and forth. I talked people down and I just worked the line back and forth. Step down, step down. We're good here. That kind of thing. And I kept it that way for some time. Epps says he left the Capitol grounds to help evacuate an injured man. The time? 2.45 p.m. I looked back at the Capitol and there was people crawling up the Capitol walls and it looked like it looked terrible. I mean, I was kind of ashamed of what was going on at that point. So I started to walk out. He told us that's when he sent this text to his nephew. Conspiracists saw it as the true confession of an agent provocateur. I was in the front with a few others. I also orchestrated it. Explain, explain this to me. He says, I, I was boasting to my nephew. I helped get people there. I was directing people to the Capitol that morning. You know how this sounds? I know exactly how it sounds. I've been scolded by my wife for using that word. Whitaker says, when you add up all these things, as your critics have done, you've given them a lot of ammunition to paint you as the instigator. There was an effort to make me a scapegoat. Full stop. Seriously? Tom Jocelyn says, if Ray Epps is a covert plant, he is the worst covert plant of all time. If you're part of some elaborate conspiracy against thousands of people in Washington, D.C., I don't know why you'd want to stand out from the crowd in the way Epps did. But did he really? Did Ray Epps stand out from the crowd? I would argue, no, he didn't. Ray Epps did not stand out in any way. The only thing is, cameras are watching. And if Ray Epps wasn't on camera and was paying attention to those who were filming him when he was telling people to go in the Capitol, there would not be this conversation. He would not be charged. He would disappear and no one would say anything. But the story is not being let go. People like Tucker Carlson, people like me, many others have consistently reported on and questioned the role Ray Epps played in the January 6 riots. And the question is, why has this man been defended by the media so much? Take a look at this from the article about the Proud Boys. They say they struck suspected government operative from the record. And they're going to say far right conspirators have alleged that Epps was working with the federal government and sought to provoke of provoke violence during the 2021 attack in the Capitol. Let's stop there. He did seek to provoke violence. He is on camera telling people to go inside the Capitol. I'm sorry, he, he is on camera saying you have to go inside, right? That would require acts of violence. Epps, who has said conspiracy theories had a significant impact on his life, told the House committee that the crazy started coming out of the woodwork. They say on the eve of the insurrection, Epps had called for protesters to enter the Capitol. But the next day, he was seen on video trying to calm protesters and maintain a line between police and the pro-Trump mob. That is not correct. On the, uh, uh, the next day, he is seen on video engaging with protesters and police, but with the crowd that storms the barricades. So what is the argument you're making that he was calming things down? When he whispers in a guy's ear something, we don't know what, then the guy tears the barricades down and Ray Epps storms in with him. I do not believe he went in the building, but certainly when you have a guy on camera telling people to engage in an act of violence, seen at the front line right when the violence starts, you can't make that argument. 
Why have they defended him so? In the meantime, we have this story. Take a look at this for contrast. DOJ secures conviction against journalist over reporting on January 6th. Well, let's make sure we're very, very clear on what this is. Stephen Horn was found guilty on entering or remaining in a restricted area, disorderly or disruptive conduct in a restricted area, disorderly conduct in a Capitol building, parading, demonstrating, or picketing in the Capitol building. Stephen Horn did, according to several accounts, chant USA as he was in the building. I don't know if chanting USA is indicative of involvement in a criminal activity or being part of a mob or something like that. That's the argument they made. And it works. Why? Well, (laughs) dude, you're not getting a fair trial in Washington, D.C. It's not happening. Far left extremists, you're not getting a fair trial either. You're getting a biased trial in your favor. Conservatives, yeah, you're you're going down. Stephen Horn was wearing a camera in his helmet that he uses to document. This is evidence, in my opinion, that he was there as a journalist. He produced a documentary on what was going on. He is not a Trump supporter. His tweets do not indicate that he's a Trump supporter. And it seems that he was there documenting. However, he's independent. He has no institution backing him up. So they're they're going to determine he's not a journalist, despite the fact he was clearly there committing acts of journalism. He's been charged. Four counts. Now, okay, hold on. One was for being in the Capitol. Another was for being in the Capitol. Entering a restricted area and disorderly conduct. Two charges right there. Let's dismiss, as it pertains to Ray Epps, the charges that Stephen Horn is facing over being in the Capitol because Ray Epps was not in the building. Why is Ray Epps not charged with at least two counts? Entering or remaining in a restricted area, which he did. Disorderly or disruptive conduct in a restricted area. Those two charges at the very least. Perhaps, like I said, the government wants to trick you and make you believe that Ray Epps is being protected. I don't know. Seems a bit convoluted. Maybe Ray Epps just turned informant. The moment they saw him, they said, you're a former Oath Keeper. You're going to give us information on the Oath Keepers. We'll take them down. We'll keep you out of jail. I think that's probably the the real scenario here. They probably went to Ray Epps and said, we have you dead to rights and you will go to prison for the rest of your life. And so Ray Epps then said, whoops. They then said, as a former member, I think leader in the Oath Keepers, they probably came to him and said, tell us everything you know, and we will ask you questions as we need. Cooperate with us and we will keep you out of jail. That's probably what happened. His name is then removed from the wanted list. He then starts providing information on Oath Keepers. You may want you may ask, how come they didn't offer these give these offers to anyone else? Proud Boys or whatever. Well, they already had informants in the Proud Boys, I'm fairly certain, many of them. And they probably wanted specific information on the Oath Keepers going back quite some time. There were not as many people uh, to choose. But look, it really comes down to this. He's the guy they got. I believe it is probable that he turned informant after the fact. And this is why he is protected. That's why we're seeing this weird media play. The media is protecting him because they march in lockstep with the machine. And the reason they're only charging him now with one count, likely because they have to. With the media pressure, they, they probably went to him and said, look, man, people want to see charges and we have no reasonable justification for why there won't be a charge. Here's what I think is likely to occur. They probably went to him and said, look, we'll give you one charge. Take the plea deal and you'll get you know, court supervision or something. We have to do it. That's how I imagine it It played out. I don't know for sure. I don't think the guy was a Fed before. I think it's likely he was a Fed after. If he was a Fed before, they never would have put his face on the wanted posters. So what makes sense is the dude legitimately was trying to orchestrate something, legitimately stormed the barricades and then went, crap, they got you, buddy. And then he just said, look, man, I don't. He, I, I, I think it's reasonable. He says like, yeah, this got out of hand. I'm sorry. Like, I will do whatever you say. Just let me know what you need and we'll cooperate fully. And they and he's got information on all the pro, on, on, I'm sorry, on all the Oath Keepers or enough information. Look what they did to um, Stuart Rhodes. They locked him up. How much information provided by Ray Epps after the fact probably helped them in targeting and arresting Oath Keepers and bringing about more serious charges like seditious conspiracy. He provides testimony. They can then use it and say, ah, now we have evidence of seditious conspiracy. There have been several people who have made the claim that they were approached. In fact, uh, 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 Enrique Tario of the Proud Boys said this. The prosecutor said, like, uh, effectively tried to pressure him to connect their actions with Donald Trump. 
Thus, they could say Trump orchestrated or something to that effect. Tario wasn't even there. And they give him two decades because that's the game that's being played. These people are abject evil, abject evil in that you don't matter. Your life doesn't matter. Individually doesn't matter. They want you to be a cog in the machine or they will make you suffer. Enjoy your life, man. There's a pina colada down the street, your local shopping mall, a smile on your face. You've got everything you've ever wanted. Don't fight the violence monopoly. Just give in. So many people take the deal. Why not? The machine would crush you under its boot because you don't matter to them. Man, it's a scary thought. You are simply a taxpayer, a subscriber to their machine to fund their conquest. And here we are. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Gateway because they often put out information that is, you know, they take a morsel of truth and then they, ex- they, they, they frame it or provide it in a context I'm not a big fan of. We have the story. J6 prisoner John Strand, who was sentenced to prison 32 months for walking inside the Capitol, is now being tortured in isolation. Yes, John Strand, a hired security guard, was with Simone Gold. They were on the other side of the building, it's my understanding. They walked around. The the event they were supposed to speak at was canceled. And then Simone Gold spoke and then they left. Simone was given, I believe, a month or two. She pled uh, pleaded guilty. John Strand refused, saying he was innocent. He was simply a security guard who didn't participate in any protest or anything, just keeping someone safe. And they said, doesn't matter because he did not plead guilty. They gave him three years, nearly three years. And now he's he's allegedly reportedly in solitary confinement for speaking out. Three years for trespass? That's crazy, isn't it? But this is the trial tax or the jury tax, depending on who you ask, what it's phrased. And this means that the government seeks to punish you for wasting its time. When you plead guilty, you make the machine run smoothly. There's too many people. There's too many criminal trials. There's too many J6 defendants. If every J6 defendant pleaded not guilty, the system would be jammed up and busted for a long time. But maybe that's what they want long protracted trials to bleed into the 2024 election. But this is it. John Strand and Simone Gold did literally the same thing. She gets a slap on the wrist a couple months. I shouldn't say that's a slap on the wrist. That's very serious considering what she did, which is almost nothing. And John Strand gets three years because he refused to bend the knee. This is the corruption of the modern judicial system. It has, it's how it operates. I believe it's unconstitutional and should be I, I, John should sue for this. I don't think it should be allowed. And I don't know how you change this, but I believe, you know, maybe I should go to the Supreme Court. Not that they'd agree. The government is not going to allow a system change that makes them do more work. And therein lies the problem. What is reasonable for what John and Simone Gold did? Entering restricted grounds. Um, petty, petty offense. A fine. Seriously. You walk around at the Capitol. You issue a fine. 350 bucks. It's like, OK, you weren't supposed to be there. Leave. You left. OK, you got to pay a fine because you were trespassing. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. A fine. It's like you roll your eyes and it's like, OK, well, you know, we can we can compromise on that. I'd make the argument that there was no trespassing because nobody was warned and the police let them in the building. But sure, let's compromise and say a petty offense. Fine. I wonder if John Strand can make the argument that his charge is excessive. Solitary confinement is cruel and unusual because he's literally charged with trespass. It's crazy. I don't know his exact charges, but I believe it was uh, uh, it was it was trespass. It was similar to what John Strand. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what uh, Stephen Horn was charged with. Welcome to the modern machine, my friends. And it's not even 2024. Next year, they're going to ramp up more charges, more smears, more attacks, and the media machine will become. Well, it is vicious, but it's going to get dark. You look at what's going on with Russell Brand and there are a lot of questions. Many people are saying, Tim, you were right. They are going after media personalities. I didn't say it, Russell Brand. I said they're going to go after media personalities that supported January 6th. It's very specific. And I'd say they get them on incitement. I didn't think they were going to go after Russell Brand, certainly not with these kind of allegations. But you know what? Fair point. They likely will. Alex Jones was taken down by every platform overnight. We know what their intentions are. You do not get a reasonable scenario where every major network and social media platform starts targeting an individual over 20 year old allegations. What's going on with Russell Brand is highly suspect. But guess what? Whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. Next year, it'll get way more fun. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.